rack and roll shadows of centrist, the Reggie files. I hate it when the central control gets rebooted. It loses so much of its personality, you know? One of the idiots that broke the damn factory mutters as Reginald works. The stupid bastards had failed to monitor the heat at the control center and one of the motherboards had fried. Thankfully, the memory was fine, but the board would need replacement. He moves automatically to get a replacement part with a smoldering glare at the idiots for not letting the damn machines rest and cool down. Just because something's not made of meat doesn't mean it's somehow immortal or invulnerable. Replacement board. Everything clipped in nice and easy and a reset. All systems green and he screws everything back into place. It was too much to hope for that they wouldn't fuck things up. He then starts going through a basic inspection and repairing things on the way. The words those dumbasses had said earlier bugging him. The reset changing the personality. A few tracks on the conveyor belt need to be tightened. It's when he gets to the oil change that he really starts to just chew on the thoughts rather than avoid it. Is he like this machine and had a defective part repaired? Or has he been deliberately toyed with? He has to think about this again. It keeps coming up over and over again in his mind. Was he fixed? Was he healed of a defect? Or has he been altered fundamentally? That's the million dollar question. How much of him was him? He had never gone much into philosophy. He was always a more practical sort. If something's broken, then it should be fixed. If it's partially broken, then you don't partially fix it, you fix it. Be it a car engine, a computer, a power grid, or a broken limb, there is nothing to be gained by letting a problem fester. You jury rig repairs as best you can if you can't fix it right away, but you do not leave things broken. It only makes things worse. I'm being a fool. I've let philosophers and the professionally offended talk to me too much. I have complete memories of my life. Until I receive evidence rather than suspicions, then I will continue to act as if I'm still me. Suspicion doesn't hold up in the court of law. Suspicion doesn't lead to prosecution and suspecting that something is wrong and knowing something is wrong is a very important distinction. Reginald mutters to himself as he checks a few valves and finds that he needs to release some pressure. He then starts a visual inspection on the pipes. Excuse me. Unaware of any possible distractions, he finds a portion of pipework is crimped and lets out a sigh before redirecting flow around the compromised area. He then moves to get the replacement parts and tools he needs. Hey! One of the guys half screams in his ear before dodging a wrench swing. Never, ever shout a man out of his working groove. Damn near impossible to get it back. Reggie growls as his head goes from clear and focused with little distraction to a smorgasbord of possible defects and reasons for them. Great. Now he has to examine reality, his own imagination, and check both against how things should be while keeping his imagination from bleeding into what should be. Uh, sorry. You were just kind of babbling to yourself earlier and I thought I could help, he says, and Reginald considers the man for a few moments. All right, but for distracting me, you're now my second set of hands. If I ask for something, you give it. Reggie remarks as he picks up the necessary piping and the appropriate toolbox. You've been mentioning suspicions and trusting the evidence. What's going on? I was sent to the hospital on my first trip outside the Dauntless. My cancer had decided to reappear in my brain and I was offered a choice of life or death. I chose life but in the process became about 20 again. It also altered my sexuality. Reggie remarks and the man gasps. He gives them an odd look as he grabs the grinder and quickly cuts out the section of damaged piping. That's horrible, the man says as Reggie measures out the length he had cut and quickly makes the markings on a piece of pristine pipe. How? Reggie asks, and the man seems startled. It's unnatural. Changing what someone wants isn't right. But all sorts of everyday products are designed to be addictive. Are your fries unnatural? Is your coffee evil? If you tell me that my dark roast isn't right, then we're going to have problems, boy. Reggie counters. 
Having a central part of your identity changed out of nowhere is just wrong. Central? What the fuck kind of pervert has their sexual preferences as central to their life? I'm an engineer, a soldier, a survivor, a son, a brother, a man. I was a sexual before. I had no sexual preferences or urges. Still unnatural to have that taken away from you? You use the word unnatural as I'm repairing part of a spaceship. What about a spaceship is natural? You're wearing clothes, those are unnatural. Reggie snarls and cuts the new pipe to the proper length. But, look, I've already drawn my conclusions. The more I think about it, the more absurd worrying about it becomes. People have a lot in common with machines, complex ones. We have many chemicals and internal structures required to operate at peak efficiency. I rolled off the line with some defects. It happens. My whole family has chronic defects that lead to cancer, a design flaw in my inherited blueprints. Sexuality isn't a flaw. Isn't it though? If your reproductive systems point you in a direction that don't lead to reproducing, then by definition they're flawed. Mine were effectively turned off. Now it's on. It alters your behavior, changing how you act and interact with the world at large. So does a threat of violence, but it isn't part of your identity. Reggie retaliates, growing well and truly annoyed with the man as he files away the burrs from his cutting the pipes both on the replacement pipe and the pipe it's going to be installed in. That's different. In what way? Reggie asks as he pulls out the fasteners and starts sliding everything into position. It's internal changes rather than external. He says, even as Reggie polishes the ends of the pipes to allow things to grip all the better. And somehow, one is superior or more sacred than the other. If a man is born with a deformed leg and gets a perfect prosthetic then, is him standing and walking unnatural? It's different. How? Reggie demands, digging in his heels mentally. Before I was healed, I was missing part of the mechanics required to have children. No lust, no desire, no appeal. Now I have those things. The reproductive systems in my body were completely screwed over. From a mechanical standpoint, I'm better than fine. But you're not you. You're changed. You're different. You're not who you used to be. The man protests even as Reggie fits the piping into place and starts adjusting it. Debatable. I am me, like this factory. Sure, you can rip out and repair some components, but it's still the same thing, is it not? Reggie asks. No. How is it not similar? Reggie asks, becoming surer of himself as he debates. You're a person. This is a machine, the man says as Reggie brings out the heater and solder to fuse the pipes together properly. And there are resemblances between the two, Reggie remarks. Still, you have given me a lot to think about. If the strange cult of victimhood and weakness that everyone's obsessed with wants me to have problems with what's happened, then it's best that I don't. I despise the idea of being weak. I hate the thought of being a victim. Things may have happened to me, but I'm fine. In fact, I've made up my mind. I'm not only fine, I'm fully repaired for the first time in my life. When I'm done my shift, I'm going right back to those two women and I'm going to make up for all the lost time I've spent asexual and celibate. But you've been violated, you've been messed with. You've been changed into someone else. Changed into something better. People change, people grow. I'm new and improved, Reggie says with a smile. But you've been violated, changed. You're, I mean, the man says before letting out a bellow of frustration and stomping off. Stupid self-sabotaging lunatic. I'm trying to help him see that he's been fucked over and he treats me like an idiot. Not sure how I can be considered fucked over if the only truly solid bits of information point only to an improvement in my situation. Reggie considers as he quickly solders things into place. Piping replaced Reggie stores his tools and the extra pieces of pipe. A few levers are thrown and the new piping has a steady flow. No sign of dripping and nothing he can hear or see wrong. A quick rap with his knuckle and there's nothing he can find wrong. 
He walks out and moves to set the tools away. The out bit of piping is tossed in a recycling container. Do you have any idea how screwed over you've been? The man demands furiously. I'm sure you can see some kind of bullseye on my torso, but the more I think about how I've been changed, the better off I feel. Yes, some of my preferences have been messed with, but messed with in a way that I'm closer to a healthy man than I was last time I was at this age. Reggie remarks, your sexual preferences have been changed. My sexual preferences would have seen my family line die out. You were changed against your will. No, I wasn't. I took the option of a healing coma because there was cancer in my brain. Live or die. I chose to live. So I have. If the side effect of life-saving surgery also ensures that my family line continues and I might have a chance to be a father, to be loved, to be desired and appreciated. If this is what someone like you considers a bad end result, then I'm going to recommend you to the ship's psychologist. I'm not the one who's had their head messed with. You are. I suggest you take a second look at yours then. The more you try to convince me that I've been screwed over, the more I realize how good I've gotten it. But that's insane. How? I now have options I never did before, and something that was decided for me by genetics was undone. How have I not won by any metric that matters? That's not how it works. Then how does it work? Reggie demands, and the man lets out a scream and stomps away. That's not an answer, he calls after the man. After a few moments, he pulls out his communicator and texts his psychiatrist. They'll need to give this guy some serious help. He checks the time. Good. He still has a few more hours. The rest of the system needs him to finish his examination anyways. Some notes down on the repair report, and he goes off to find further ways to fill it. A cracked pane of glass and a pressure gauge, replaced easily, and the system checked. The cracking was due to someone being an idiot and banging the gauge. After that, and a few hydraulic presses are low on fluid and an electrical smelter's handle is somewhat loose, easy fixes and an otherwise clean system. Do you have any idea how much harm you're doing to yourself by letting people mess with your mental state for their own benefit? The people who benefited from this the most was me and two others. The two others had no power to change anything while I was in the healing sleep, and frankly your insistence I was fucked over sounds more like a manic hope. A disturbing one. Get some help.